Hey there everyone, it's David with the UFO Dave page on Facebook. I hope you're all well. On the third anniversary of the page I put up in 2019, I think this is appropriate that this video is probably the most important video I've ever posted and likely ever will or who knows. The important thing is that this video is absolutely real. I'm sure there are people out there who will try and tell you it's not or that I'm somehow pulling a fast one, but I assure you this information is absolutely real and is happening right now. I want to say, before I get started, that I sent photos and video of some of this information to the University of British Columbia, the Paleontology Department. And their response was, not a cursory, we don't find this to be valid or uh, what you say it is. So thank you very much. Pat me on the head and send me on my way. But the University of British Columbia ignored me completely. So we'll see what they have to say. Likely nothing when people start to spread this information around. So let's get right into it because this is going to take a while. Anybody who wants to see a two minute video of something shocking them is going to be disappointed because this is going to take a little bit of time. I mean, you've probably seen already the files I've got here other than the recording file for this particular video. This is a continuation of the headless seal that I came across on the beach that I was walking on in 2016. I posted that video on YouTube. It was an hour long and it had photos and videos and whatnot. In fact, last year I was contacted by a television show called Mysteries of the Deep and ended up being on that show, being interviewed by the director for this particular incident case. But at the time, I don't know why, but I didn't really understand the gravity of coming across a headless seal on the beach. But the biggest and most shocking thing that I really didn't understand at the time, I, I don't know why, were the giant claw prints next to the seal. I mean, I, when I say giant, I'm talking size 17, length probably 12, width, um, and a bunch of other things that were anomalous. Interestingly enough, I was researching animal mutilations and had seen a video by a couple of people uh, who were looking into the mutilation of a horse. So I just started becoming interested in that kind of thing. But when I came across this seal on the beach, it seemed to click that this was a very similar, if not exactly the same um, type of uh, scenario that I'd just seen with the uh, investigators looking into this horse that was mutilated. Well, let me get this going on here. So I've got these two. I've got the headless seal videos. And these, I've only got two videos because the entire video took an hour long and I looked into the um, 
the let me go back here for a second I'm getting sidetracked I'll show you the photo of it so here's the headless seal this was 2016 I believe September 3rd 2016 and I was walking my dog on the beach came across this nobody else had really come across it all these prints they were uh, after I'd been there for an hour or so, uh, the beach got quite, uh, quite marked up with shoe prints and whatnot. But I just wanted to show the relevant uh, videos. And we'll just sit back and watch this one first. Okay, I'm continuing on here. Um, one thing I've have seen uh, in saying there's no no definite prints is two evenly spaced prints, no similar deep indentations leading to them, as if like two side by side rather deep indentations that look like footprints. But the sand has been pushed up. I mean, I, my footprints as I've walked around it are like that. They're not even, that's my footprints. And then these really deep side-by-side -side indentations with the sand having been pushed up. And no other similar um, indentations anywhere near. It's quite windy. I apologize for the video quality, audio quality. There, but then to there. And then no other indentations similar anywhere near no dog prints leading to or from now I want to show you this and I want I want to point out a number of things here that that I want you to pay attention to this being one of them I looked at this and wondered what it was because it doesn't really match with any other print as if you know say for example a dog had run in and come up to this point uh, but there was no prints leading to or from. So this is a, a circular print, probably five or six inches across. Um, my size 12 shoe is about the length of that there. So this is just one single mark in the sand. So we've got the two next to the seal, deep indentations. One here, a circular one. And I want you to notice this one as well. This looks as if somebody had stepped into the sand and left an imp imprint of their foot. But it's not. It's got the same amount of sand kicked up as these two prints here. So I want you to pay attention to that. I'm going to continue on here. That is interesting. We have a similar, you see it's almost a, in these footprints, it's almost a, a pushing off. I also want you to note this. You see this sort of a honeycomb pattern? Square, square, square there. And how it kind of comes to a point. This one too. You see the sort of weird pattern in the sand, but particularly right here, the square, square, that kind of pattern left into the sand by whatever it was that was here. I also want to make note of another print right here. That one makes three, so we've got three prints actually. One, two, and three. And then that round one was over here. You can see it right in the corner. It looks like a, a, just a, 
big dog print, or it did to me anyhow. So let's continue on with the video. So pushing off. Like, I don't know what that uh, footprint indentation is. It's not, <laughs> I don't want to make any speculations, but that's not a boot. And now those two indentations that appear, they're just disappearing with the sand. So when the wind blows, they're going to be gone. But there's that, and then there's almost one more in front of it and my boot print right next to it but that one right there there's the two right near the carcass there's one right there it's not three <laughs> but yeah three yeah anyway and then beyond that and look there's no dog prints around there no dog prints. But this is what I'm discovering as I'm seeing this area, other than a few footprints. I don't know. Those are some weird sand imprints right next Something to a very took weird. Something from there. <laughs> I want you to notice. Look. These are teeth marks. This little notch here is where it was bitten off. And this little notch here is where it was bitten off. And you can see, initially I thought it was some kind of a scalpel, some knife, some laser thing. I mean, the investigators who look into this kind of thing talk about laser precision, etc., etc. But the only thing that I can see here is a jaggedy edge right here and teeth marks coming down here. So in my opinion, this is where it was bitten into and then pulled off and the skin will separate once it's cut, will separate around straight. It wasn't sliced in my opinion. You can see it's pulled back a couple of inches already, but there's fresh blood underneath here. And I believe those two here are dog prints, but this one across here, I believe, is the chin of something after it put it down in the ground. Anyhow, let's continue. Weird. Man. Okay, I'm going to pause it again here. So that's the end of that video. They came in segments because I'm pausing them and then uh, continuing on when I see something else. Okay, continuing on with the uh, weird footprint things that are disappearing here as the sand is being blown. And then that other one that I so they were fresh. identified there. They were fresh when I arrived. When you could see all those prints in the sand, they were fresh. I came upon this scene and scared something away. Oh, I'll go back here. Now look. Over here, we've got another one. Oh my goodness. Like, look at the size of that claw mark. With the sand being kicked up like that. Look how much like sand. That. Now there's nothing else, so there's it's no kicked dog up. prints around that. this. No dog There's nothing prints. Dog, no dog prints. There's two nothing. there, actually. There's two prints there. I'm going to go in close on this again. But There's one just to the right there. I don't know what, what kind of footprint that is. Yeah. That's wide. That is wide. And here's my foot in comparison to that. I don't know what that is. It seems like kind of by itself, but the sand is being blown now. But then so below that, towards the water, there's this as well. Look at how much force but again, pushed the sand up there. Look like how the much sand that, was whatever displaced. It is. Scratch, push, something. It almost looks like it's to the side in a way. It's like at an angle. It went towards the water. The sand goes pushed back. But again, look at the 
width of that, the size of that compared to my foot. And there's no dog prints around this. So the there's a couple of little tiny sand. dog prints. Look at the tiny ones in the sand next to it. But there's none leading to yeah, or away from those these, these prints are being prints. blown away as I'm as I'm speaking, so it's evidence being destroyed by natural cause, natural causes. Look at the size of that. And again, beyond that, there's nothing from there. There's a couple of dog prints there and a couple of scratches from dogs, but there's nothing similar as far as the digs, those deep digs in the sand, like this, and then beside that, and then up here, and then the ones right beside, side by side, Side by side, get my shadow under there. Right over the carcass, right next to it. And there's no other footprints, not even mine, you can see going around this. Like, certainly not as deep. I went around this way. And do you see my footprints sinking into the sand that deep? Dry sand. to see that too. I don't know if you can see it. This this thing keeps coming in the way. Below the seal, there's a little pop mark right here. Something nicked the sand there. Uh, where's Linda Moulton Howe when you need her? Yeah. Where's Richard D. Hall? Yeah, those were the Come two on. who were looking at that horse. That down here next to there is a chin imprint, in my opinion. Clean wounds. There's no blood around those. Giant teeth marks. I need some sort of a veterinary specialist who's not jaded in this uh, this world. This is not done by animal predation. That line along there is no animal, and this would take. Well, anyway, this is speculation on my part, but we'll see. Down. No and regular animal, let's say, no animal that we're aware sand of. Sand disturbed. Getting this animal in here. These two footprints right next to it, side by side. I just walked around. And then the circular thump in the sand right here, this one right here, and then that almost footprint, foot long thump indentation in the sand as well, we're noting. Here, and look at my, my footprints don't even sink in the sand like that. Look how deep these are. Something pushed They're down push with great force something. to displace that amount of sand. And look, you can still see the pot, Again, no sort other, of the pot marks in there. There's nothing leading to it. There's no, there's no footprints leading to that. Those two that are right side by side next to it, or the ones that are along the way here. Again, look at this particular pattern in the sand. It's a real light disturbing of the sand. And 
like, almost, I don't know how you describe that, but it's right next to this big push-off like print. What this, what made this, and again, the sand is disturbed again, like, in a very similar way. Pushed back as if something pushed off and in the direction of the water. So, say there's two here and here. Say there's another two with this disturbing of the sand in a weird way next to it. And then a little break in the sand. And then say two more. And then nothing. I want you to notice these disturbances here in the sand. Nothing. I'll show a photo of them afterwards. Around it. So we've got in the direction that it was going. There's a series of prints that lead directly to the water. Bipedal. Bipedal. I don't know. We'll see. The head was nowhere to be found. I don't want to disturb this. As far as I'm concerned, this is a crime scene. See that chin imprint? Little marks of blood right there. Just a little couple of marks side by side. And then there's the marks of blood. Look. There's right there. tips of fingerprints right in the belly, in blood. But, yeah, two, nothing, then looks like two or some, one, two, three, maybe pushed off, and then a break in the sand, and then more push-offs or something. Again, look at the width of this. Boy, what kind of a dog does that? Huh? You can see the sections where the sand has been disturbed. It's drier. And the other parts haven't even been touched. I don't see anything else around here. You can see those prints. There they are. Leading directly to the water. These wide ones. I don't know what those are. But they don't look normal and they go in that direction straight to the water. Nothing I can see. Nothing I can see leading towards the water. Yeah. I couldn't I mean, see it at the time, but if after I pushed the fact, off that hard to disturb the sand like that, I'd probably hit the water in one bound. So when I found this, I called the Richmond Animal Protection Society, RAPS. I called the SPCA. When I called RAPS, the person on the phone said that this was the second headless seal in the exact same spot on the exact same beach within a week. And that person got off the phone and within minutes, a director from the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries contacted me midday on a Saturday, asking me all the details about it. And I said, is something going to be coming by? And he said, no, we just let these things take care of themselves. We let nature take care of it, he said. But at the same time, there were other things happening that I've posted on YouTube on this same page with this video and then forgot about it. 
or not forgot about it, but that didn't actively investigate it until recently. So I've shown this video here of the headless seal. I'll go to the photo file that I have now so we can see some of the, uh, the photos that I put together of it. These are the prints. You can see the pot marks or the honeycomb pattern as if you were barefoot and your skin, the prints from your skin and the lines in your skin left the imprint. So listen, folks, this isn't made up. I just want to stress this. This is 2016, a headless seal with prints, giant claw prints of something heavy that sunk into the sand when it took off or ran off or whatever it did. 2016. And I think all these years, six years go by, and I think there was still a part of me that was like, oh, that's just dogs. And it might have been a propeller from a boat or something. Everything that people are saying to me, these are, oh, they're just dog prints. And this is just something that happens when you're in a waterway, a busy waterway. These are some weird prints, folks. Right next to it. So remember that thump? There was one round one right here. And then there was a foot long one right here. Well, here's another one right here. A thump. Something went thump into the sand. Here and here. Prints. Thump. Thump. Okay, and I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to look at even the distance. And let's say this is probably two feet. Maybe three feet because we're at an at a angle. So the perspective makes it look shorter. So maybe three feet from this print. Okay, so we're, we're remembering these things like the honeycomb pattern, the circular thump into here with no other prints around, just something that went straight down into the sand, just like these were straight down. The force was straight down, lifting up all the sand. Then we've got something else that went into the sand and then something else here. And these are about a foot long, this one and this one. Okay, remember these things. I, I'm showing this little pot mark that I pointed out. You can see like a little bifurcated tail swung around and went boom and nicked the, nicked the sand. So Pay attention to that mark right there in the sand. See that and how far it is from that? There's the mark. Look at that. I mean, we're talking, there's my footprint right next to it. You can see I, I have a photo of my, I went, did an imprint or a, rather a tracing of my foot. And you can see it, but there's my foot. This is giant. Okay, and I want, when I say this is giant, I, this is about size 17. So giant is a, a perspective. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to need people to open your minds. Okay. When you're watching this, open your minds. That's all I got to say, because what's coming is going to shock you. And a lot of people are going to say this is fake and I'm making it up or whatever, but this is absolutely real. And it's going to shock a lot of people what's coming. So keep watching. So here's a print. These are the same prints. I just put a filter on it to, to show you how deep these ridges run and how much sand. See, this, this is a chunk of sand that was just kicked up and poof, hit there. That's a dog print, little dog print, little tiny dog print. I mean, uh, yeah, dog, not dog. Again, the same one. You might see a lot of doubles of these pictures. I apologize. I'm just throwing everything I can out here to show you what, what's what and the truth of what's going on. The Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries are lying. They're covering up. 
They know what's going on. If I can find this and then follow the breadcrumbs and find what I've found in such a short time, they know. And the cops and all their brotherhood and all this other kind of stuff, they see the victims. They see the victims. Whether it's a seal or a sea lion or a goose or a person, they see the effects of what giant claws can do. They're lying. Anyhow, these are giant claw prints. But wait, there's more. So there's pretty much the whole scene. You can see the little bit of the tail of the seal right up there. So this is the whole scene right here. I don't know if this is one, two, three critters, one with big legs and claws in the front. I don't know. It's just a lot of disturbances here with a lot of claw prints that are much bigger than my size 12 foot next to a headless seal. Like, <laughs> come on. You can pause these. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. I don't want to be dwelling on the same photos over and over, but if you wanted to see them, you can certainly pause this video. You can see the ridges around this. Okay, we're going to be paying attention to that. We're going to pay attention to the shape of these. The shape of these. There's that thud about three feet away from this print. Here's those prints going straight to the water. I saw this after the fact. So a lot of these videos, I'll say something in them, and I'm, you know, in the heat of the moment or whatever it is, the excitement, I'll uh, say backwards when I meant forwards or something like that. But anyhow, when I said there's nothing around, when I looked at these, look at these prints going straight to the water. Now, they also stop right about here, in my opinion. So they may not be going into the water, this thing may have taken off and needed a bit of a run versus the other one right with the prince right next to the headless seal shot straight up in the air. But there was something else that hit the ground around it, a, a number of things that, th that thudded into the sand that left an impression. So I believe one of them went straight up into the air and then this one here ran to the water and took off before it got to the water. So I've drawn a red line. This is not exact. This is with my finger on my phone, not with my uh, professional uh, Premiere Pro or Photoshop or anything like that. But I wanted to show this and I'll show you the comparison with something that's coming up that you'll see 2016 versus 2022. Here's a line around the one in 2016. And I put a number of different dots around here to try and identify where these were. Red, this is the same one here. I believe it's a sort of a tripedal type of deal. And then this, I believe, is a scratch mark, something in the sand as it was going. You've got other marks here. So it could be another, uh, another uh, creature. I'm just trying to... to fit it all together here so i'm believing that the, this might be associated with this and this but who knows who knows i'm just drawing connections at this point my foot next to the one look how wide that is i mean claw 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 i put filters on these to kind of Add more contrast to them so you can see the depth of these. And look how much sand again. All this sand was kicked back. And no prints leading to it. Like, a, you know, you could say, okay, a dog was running towards it, but you'd see dog prints coming towards it. This is sand that's kicked back in a chunk. These are chunks of sand that have been kicked back all the way from here. So you can see directional. All along this line chunks of sand but no prints leading to it here's human print human prints this print right here connects to this print here anyway someone went right across here didn't even see it anyhow more connections 
Now look at this. No animals came by and were sniffing this. There might be two prints right here and here where a dog came along and put its nose there. But a dog came by after the fact, after I'd videotaped it for an hour, after I had gotten all this information, this dog came by and dug deep holes. Look at these holes. They're like two feet deep at least. This is where those giant claw prints were. It smelled something. It got the scent of something and wanted to find it. Wanted to get to it. Badly. I've never seen holes dug this deep on this beach before. And again, a duplicate of that one. More prints. Just the width of these. And how much sand is being kicked back. I'm just trying to get them from all different angles. And my foot next to it, so you can see size 12. I mean, anyway, there's no question. These are giant in comparison to my feet. I mean, so six years go by. There's those pop marks. You can see little squares. Little squares and then the drag marks of this one. This one could be the same as the other ones, but it went straight up instead of dragged its claws through the sand. Look at all this kickback. I'm mean, how much sand. There we go. So I I traced my foot. These drag marks, and this one goes all the way through there. There we go, we're going through doubles again. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, anything else that we, nothing that's really of note. So I'm going to go back. Six years go by. And I go camping at a campsite. And I'm... This one right here. And I'm walking up on a rock. And you'll see what I see. Claw prints in stone. You can see all these screenshots, photos, videos, and then an edited one that I did a short video of it that I sent to the University of British Columbia. And again, they ignored me. They know this is out there. They're hiding this. They're set up to hide this. Anyway, let's watch these videos. You can see little red line around that. We'll see what's coming. All right. Enjoy. Okay, I wanted to make a record of this because I don't know if and when I'll be back. Here's the beautiful view through the trees. Anyhow, I'm at the Klahani campsite near Squamish, British Columbia. And I came up on this rock and found this, which is a right-angled indentation into the rock. Giant, giant rock. And you can see, I'll come around here, the angle of this. There we go. Make a note of this. A 90 degree like indentation, like it slopes down. down, yeah. And it actually slants down at this angle. And these sides are flat. This has got a little bit of an indentation here, but generally 
flat. So then I started looking around the rock, hmm. and look what I found. Any of you who followed me and have seen lately the stuff I've put up with this headless seal on the beach will know what we're looking at here. Now this is a solid rock. I don't know what kind of rock this is, but it's got uh, it's got some quartz in it. But we're talking solid rock. Granite. Anyhow, check this out. This is a print. You can see it's been dug into the rock. You can't see the print when. right from here. It's been oh dug my into goodness! The rock, but this is solid. This is not new. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get in here and. And uh, show you with my hand. Look, the indentation. Look at all those. That's right here. Indentation. Straight Look down at all those. Something. One, two, three, four. That right there. Four of them that go right and gone down. Really deep into the ground. Four inches. You can see the direction of this as well. Look, straight edge along here, and a curve around here. So this, whatever it was, pushed off like that. There's a gouge right there, and behind it, gouge, gouge, like something with a giant claw type foot gouged out that in the direction that it was going. It's a solid rock, and this is, you know, my fingers are pretty long, but. Look, you I mean, can see the, the, into the, the claw the, uh, prints in it. Into the rock. Look at the curve. Claw, 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 this claw. This is exactly the same type of print with the same angle. Everything that I have shown already of the seal on the beach and the prints that were next to it. This is exactly the same. This is the same creature. That's why I drew a line around Dug it. Dug right into the rock. I don't know when. Could have been hundreds of years ago. Because nope. there's no fragments of rock anywhere. Then we've got that. this as well. Remember I said there was a thud in the sand and we just looked at it? We just looked at that thud that was about three feet max from the print. So I've got two gouges and a big 90 degree flat indentation. Something pushed off of this rock. And Foot left long an indentation. indentation into the rock. But anyway, there's the freaking print right there. There's the proof positive. Then you see the claw prints. The next rock over. <laughs> Speaking of claw prints. Three giant gouges in that rock. And what looks like a gouge along there. Not a gouge. Impression. But imprint. Those three right there. Look at that. Look how big that is. Now I want to say I looked into uh, how long it takes for moss to grow. See the moss inside the, the grooves here? You know how long it takes for moss to grow? Six months to two years. Okay. So that moss didn't grow until those cuts were made. Then, next to that, there's a flat spot, as if the rock was sheared off. It's like flat. And on the other side, there's this sliding kind of print that slides down and looks to me as if it's sliding in this direction and goes there. That actually looks like toes. That something slid down there and created a gouge in the rock right there as well. Gouge. But also, I don't know if you can see this. Check out this pattern. It's like a honeycomb pattern. Remember the squares really in the sand? See. It's the same, exactly the same honeycomb pattern that was in the sand next to the headless seal. The two prints right next to it had this honeycomb pattern in it. 
So something, whatever it was, you can see it slid down. In sand, creating folks. Creating a gouge in the rock. Okay. You could this say that this was prehistoric or something. And the Any expert pattern with a grade three education in this. would know this is not like right here, prehistoric. You can see a, kind by of the a way, honeycombing, square, 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 like little squares. But in sand, it's exactly the same print that was left not next prehistoric. to the seal. Look how deep those are. These three gouges. Look how deep and long they are. Is there an echo in here? This one here. Whoa, Gouch man! Right Look at that so imprint. So there's a whole scene here of something that went on. You can see the print on the top right over here. This print here with an indentation right next to it, and then a large indentation right Big there. Big ninety-degree chevron. And then here, pushed right into the rock. A long gouge. And in that the was rock. pushed into the rock. And, and look, look, you can see this ridge, ridge that goes along like this. Something pressed into that and left an impression. You can see it's just all gnarly. Smooth pop, on pop, one pop, side, pop, pop gnarly. Something pressed in pop marked along on the there and left that ridge. At the same time, gouge marks over here. A flat spot along the rock like it's been sheared off. And then a slip, a slide right down there. Something was running. So either something was big enough that its claws were on this side here. It, it is, trust me. And all the way trust over there. Me it is. And something pressed into the sand or rock or whatever it was there. And it took off. We're looking at a creature that is quite large. Yep. Wait quite till large. you see what's coming. And then the lower rock is another indentation. Look. All the way along here, it's an indentation. Something has pressed into this or has done some something. You can see the rippling in it. Like it's pressed in an uneven surface. The rest of the rock is smooth, smooth. Here, ripple, 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 ripple. Something's pressed into it. So you see, just thinking out of the box here, if this is something with wings, and claws like a giant bird, say a thunderbird or something like that. It may leave an impression if it's left footprints and gouged out the rock. It may have left an impression right here as well. And then a big impression with this wing here, okay? So you've got one wing over here and you've got one wing over here and you've got claws in the middle gouging on this rock and pushing up indenting that into the ground and gouging a giant gouge a giant as big as my foot 12 inches in a semicircular kind of pattern look you can even see this is the first time I'm looking at this now through the camera lens I can see it look at those ones gouge gouge Gouge, what the F. So right that's on the outside of that print, print, the same as the other one, the slip so on the other what? side is on the feet? other side of and those then claw some prints. some hooky claws. Here's the feet and here's the claws on the other side. And here's a gouge too and there's an indentation and there's claws on this side. So look, how long is this one? You know, we're talking, each of these is about the same, you know? Each of these is about the same. <laughs> oh boy. Uh -huh. Let me measure with my finger. Okay. Oh boy. Let's see what we have here. Yeah. So, at some point in the past, something with wings, in my opinion, was right here. And left big gouges, and big scratches in the rock. And it's smooth, so it's been here for a long time. Not millions of years, though. The bottom there, where you can see that pattern, too. 
that jagged Not many pattern along here. Wow. Anyway, there you have it. Some shit going on they're not telling us about. Yeah. These aren't dinosaurs. These are not dinosaurs. Not dinosaurs from millions of years ago. For God's sake, look up. Yeah. <laughs> look up. So, we'll look at this one. Then I continue it after looking at the scene for a while. We'll watch this video. Okay. I'm continuing with the video. And here we are. This is what I figured out. This is where the bird was. I'll uh, say the bird, the creature. It's got wings, so there's no question about this. Still figuring On one it side, out. you've got gouges in the rock, directional gouges, and you can see those three on the side, too. Okay, so we've got basically three gouges in that rock and one right angled indentation pointing in that direction. On the other side, okay, I'm backing up so I can get this into the frame, there's the gouges on the other side, okay? So you've got gouges on one side and a giant indentation, directional. By the way, I want to show you this. I don't know if the re we really explored this one enough, but you can see in this particular one, <laughs> right Look here. at those claw prints. Ah, the light. Look at the point One, to that. Look how it two. created There's that indentation. There. That was a sharp claw. Okay, that was a sharp claw. Here and here. Dragged out this chunk of rock right here. Hmm? Oh, they created that. And then down here, I'm going to have to take this uh, at another time because down here you can see. There we go how it came from here and gouged it, literally a valley, right down to a point at the very bottom of this hole. Here's my finger at the bottom of that hole. That's like, okay, the entire length of my finger is the depth of that point right there. And then this one here, look, you there can see fibers in there. this shape. The claw came right down. Two claws. Right down there and, and came back and drew back. So this thing here came down the there other hand. Fibers actually, so in that whatever, hole. I'm holding the camera. It came down, clawed in, came down right there, came down, claw, pulled back, and look what's at the back of it. Indentation. So it came back and went boom and dug out there and there as well as it drew back. Anyway, going back to my original story here. We're looking at where this bird took off from. This giant creature. So it left claw marks over there, a giant right angled indentation in that direction, and claw marks and some stuff going on here where it's knocked off the top of this rock. You can see it dragged through in that direction, going this way, and then right over top of the rock, taking here and here as well, taking the entire top off. Look at that, it's flat. It took the top off the rock as it dragged back. And so, we've got another indentation right here that I measured with my arm. That's the length of my arm, and you can see an indentation that goes around, jaggedy, 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 all around that. That's something indentation, indented into that, pushed into that. So this is the direction we're going. In addition to that, You've got this one over here in the rock, which is that jaggedy. Once again, you can see it goes from a smooth rock to a jagged impression in the rock. A jagged impression. So this is its wing. This is an impression of its wing. Okay? So you've got the giant bird standing about, yay, about here. I'm up on a tree right now, so if I fall down, call the ambulance. Wing, or rather, um, indentations here, indentation there, in kind of a V shape, pointing towards us. Not towards us, away direction. from us, rather. <laughs> a giant indentation direction, with some kind of a pattern around it that's indented into the ground, and then a wing pattern hitting the ground and leaving a deep 
deep being inches, we're looking at inches, smooth rock to indented, bubbly kind of uneven rock. That's a wing. Crazy, man. Anyhow, so it took off from here and made indentations and dug out into the rock as it went. Going, and here's the pot mark right below us here, and a wing pattern off to the uh, left hand side. Claw marks going in that direction, and gouges and claw marks in a 90 degree. So it went. And by the way, I contacted the Klahani campsite and sent them an email telling them I had contacted the University of British Columbia and suggested they contact UBC. What have I heard from them? Nothing. You know, I wonder how many places have been set up just to hide this kind of thing. And I wonder if I went back to this location, if I'd find it all destroyed. So this is the 90 degree chevron. It's about four inches down at the deepest level at the uh, 90 degree angle there. But it's about two feet extending in either direction and just pressed down. And look, you can see along the edges too, there's some destruction of the edges of the, of the rock. So it, whatever did this, did it with some force. I'm taking it from a bunch of different angles. You can see. And there's this one as well. There's, I'm not sure what this one is, but I, it's connected. I'm sure. We've got a whole scene of the foot long thud or thump that we saw in the sand right there about this one's about a foot, a foot and a half away from this, but it's in the same direction. And then this something pressed down here. I had to actually uncover. You can see this is fresh, fresh soil. I uncovered this to see how far it extended along this way. So there we go. The thud foot long matches the one in the sand in 2016. This with its curved edge here, you can see a dig out of here where it came and drew through this way and dug right out that way as it threw whatever it was behind it. The soil or dirt. You can see the lines that go right from here. This one jagged, jagged. But you can see they you can follow the lines. Follow the lines, follow the lines, follow the lines. Some of the photos aren't as good as others. The sun was creating some issues. There's my foot, so you can see nice Crocs. Um, the size, they're size 11, so. My foot next to the chevron or indentation, 90 degree indentation. You can see, look at that. Look at that. I'm going to zoom in. You can see this. Look at that. Right there. That is a claw print. A giant claw dragged right through there and took that chunk of rock out. Then the gouges. And the flat spot you can see there along here where these match if you took a line and drew it straight back it would match this line right here that went into the rock as well as the other two claws and took this entire section of rock off
That, I believe, is an imprint of a wing. I mean, that's the same one, but I've uncovered it. I have took all of this out, and you can see it was a deep... As long as my arm, you'll see, I took a photo of it. And the jagged edges of something, a wing, I believe, pressed into that. Not during prehistoric days when the earth was forming and blah, blah, blah. That's all bullshit. And you can tell from the uh, response from the University of British Columbia that they don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole, which is a cover-up. So this is the extent of what they know. I put my hand where I saw some claw prints. So this has got four or five. I think it's got like a hand, really. Like it's not three claws. I think it's actually like a hand, five-finger hand. So this is the extent of the information that I've given the University of British Columbia. Because they didn't respond to me, I didn't give them any more information. There's my foot next to the claw prints, size 11. A lot of these are the same photos, again, from different angles. Or you can, Oh, my goodness. Look at that. If you can't see a claw impression in that right there with one, two, three, four, five, at least one, two, three, four, five, going right into that rock and dragging it through, I don't know, and there's a big old chunk of rock taken out. Look at that. You can see it. These peaks. These peaks. The points of the claws. You can see they're so sharp. They're cutting right through the rock. There's my arm in that hole. I don't know what that means, but my arm fit in that hole. You can see where it's, again, these two right here and here. From a certain angle, you can really see the sharp claw where it came down right into the rock. And there's my arm again with it. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be. I think it's in a different angle, but my arm fit in there perfectly. So there it is. There's that thump, the thud in the sand and in the rock right next to the footprint, claw print. I mean, you can tell just from the rock and, the, and the, the way that the rock is that it's not millions of years. Like I said, any kid with a grade three education can see. Now look, I've drawn this red line around this one. This is where the rock kind of shattered a little bit, so I followed that line. But this is what I want you to look at. It's this straight edge along here, and it goes around in a curve. It matches. 2016 on the left, 2022 on the right. This straight edge along here is both in sand and in stone. And the same curve, the same kind of straight edge along here, these are exactly the same. This is our Cinderella monster. The shoe fits, the claw fits, the claw print fits. Uh, it's just not a joking matter. Anyhow, I put circles around them so you can see where they match. And there you go. So there you have it. There's a few more of these, but uh, otherwise they're pretty much the same. Look, you can see along the edge where it's been kind of destroyed along the edge of this. Something came down and made this. This is not a natural formation. And this isn't man-made. This is definitely not man-made.
So I'm kind of hammering you over the head with that. So let's uh, let's continue on. Got a lot of stuff to cover still. So these ones are just photos that I took. Comparisons. The one on the beach versus the one in the sand, or rather the one on the beach versus the one in stone. These fibers that were in there, in rock, fibers in rock. Fibers or hair samples, who knows what it is. They've probably destroyed the evidence by now. This is that footprint or whatever it is. I don't know what print, but it cut the rock. There's a ridge along the rock here. And there's these, again, sort of square honeycomb type pattern in it. And again, the thump in the sand versus the thud in the rock. Look, you can see the jagged. Oh, boy. If you can't see that, you're blind. We're covering it up. Part of the cover up. Because this is massive. This is not one or two creatures around, okay? Keep watching. Again, there you go. See those points. We're going to see a lot of points, a lot of things pointing in the direction we're looking at. Look at that. Point, point, point. All the way down. Little valleys where the claws went right through the ground. And again... Okay, there you have it. Moving on.